Welcome back to another episode of this workbench build. In this video, we are going to be installing the drawer slide and drawer boxes, the electrical system, setting up the dust collection, and many more. I started by cutting down all the panels for the drawer boxes and scissor leaf base plate. Next, I drill some pocket holes. I have already assembled most of the drawer boxes but I left this one out just to show you the process. When installing the drawer slide, I use the same 2x4 lumbar all through the installation process to ensure that the height are the same. When installing the scissor leaf base plate, I noticed one side was a little bit shorter. I didn't mark on the drawer slide, so when I pull the slide out, I will know the exact location. I pre drill the holes before installing the bolts to prevent the wood from splitting. This drawer slide I'm using has a locking mechanism and is rated for 410 pounds load capacity. Next, I place the scissor lift on the base plate and secure it with screws. If you are interested in how I build the scissor lift, you can find the video and the build plan in the video description below.
Moving forward, I cut some more plywood on my mitre saw for the sandpaper storage. To attach the top and the bottom of the storage, I mark the side at the center, align them before driving in the screws. I mark and pre-install the drawer slide. Next, I install the sandpaper dividers with some pocket hole screws. This piece acts as a stopper to prevent the sandpaper from falling out. Installing the drawer slide was a bit more difficult than I thought due to the fact that this piece was small but with the help of this right angle attachment I was able to install it successfully. When I installed the box, it was a little bit crooked, then I adjust the drawer slide off camera, then reinstall it. I'm installing the inlet hose adapter for the dust collection. This is going to be a press fit. Screwing down the legs will prevent it from moving backward when connecting the dust port of the dust collector.
Next, I install the swivel bracket for the hosiery. I marked the perfect spot and then drew a hole for the hose to go through and then this happened. This is the moment of truth. If I wire this correctly, then according to the instruction, these two lights will turn on, and if not, we we'll fire it. And everything is working fine. I then wire the limit switch with a normally closed configuration. In the instance the wire fails, then the limit switch will stop working, preventing any accident. I split the wire of the linear actuator, then join the cut wires to the limit switch.
This is the power inlet that gives life to the entire workbench and the second one is just a standard outlet. The power inlet supplies power to the central junction box and from here, the power is distributed throughout the workbench. This two wire goes to the front of the workbench. One is connected to the dust collection system and the other is not. The one that is connected to the dust collection system goes all the way around to the second junction box. This box holds all the wires for the dust collection system then comes out through this single wire which is connected to the eye-back sensor and then back to the central junction box. This outlet is for the air compressor and eye-back sensor plug which is connected to the central junction box. As you can see, these two wires are separated to avoid triggering the eye-back sensor. The wire from this second junction box goes to the third box. This third junction box distributes power to all the outlets linked to the dust collection on this side of the workbench. This outlet is for the planer and seizure lift. There are two different powers going into this outlet. By breaking this clip, we isolate them, enabling independent functionality. This separation prevents the seizure lift from turning on the dust collector. This switch controls the outlet for the planer. The second wire from this junction box goes to the outlet for the table saw and the third wire is connected to the outlet at the back of the workbench. Lastly, the wire from the standard outlet goes directly back to the central junction box. Next, I drill the holes for the hold and clip with a fastener bit and then secure it with some screws. I then check diagonally for the squareness of the workbench. For the top of the workbench, I use a high quality Baltic bench plywood and sandwich two together. We applied generous amount of wood glue making sure the board was saturated. I 
at this point, we use all the clamps and improvise to put as much load as possible. We then top it off with the heaviest weight, which is me. I trim off the excess after the glue had dried. I then secure the top to the body with screws. Next, I plane out this hard maple to the right thickness for the vise. I use the table saw to cut it to width and then cut it to length on the miter saw. I cut the paper template to the exact length and width, tape it to the spot where the vise will be mounted and trace the holes. Using double sided tape, I put the two maple woods together so I can drape both at the same time. I use wood glue and bragnet to attach the edge bend. In this case, I'm using hard maple. I cut the slot for the T-tracks. This was not the best due to excessive vibrations from my end. I will fill the gaps as you will see later. Then I added a 45 degree chamfer for a nicer smooth finish. You can see how loose the T track is in the slot. I then fill in those gaps with a wood filler. I cut the T-tracks to length instead of buying short ones as it was more cost effective. It was time to brand the workbench. This was scary. I cannot afford to make any mistakes.
we apply three coats of finish on the top and two on the side, sanding between each coat. After the stain have dried overnight, it was time to install the T-Tracks. I then turn this piece of oak on my professional wood lathe. This will be the handle of the vise. I carefully place the adhesive vise pad on the vise jar. If you are considering building this workbench, the build plan will be in the video description below or you can find it on my website at volecodiy.com. The locking mechanism requires both hands to unlock the drawer slide, so attaching one wooden bar took care of that. Just when I think I have had enough for the day, this happened. I then secure the planer to the sigil lift with two bolts.
then I check and adjust the leveling fit until the workbench was leveled. Using my stud finder, I locate the stud before securing the iRack Pro switch to the wall. If you're going to be building this workbench or incorporating this design into your existing workbench, it is important to note this safety feature. I'm pressing the lift button now, but nothing seems to be working. That's because I installed the main switch, which will prevent the seizure lift from going up when it's inside of the workbench. So that way, if someone walks in and accidentally presses this button, it will not damage the um, seizure lift or the planer or the workbench itself. So I just want to point that out. Even if I pull it halfway, it still will not work. Unless it's fully extended, that is when it will work. Now the drawer slide are locked, so it's going nowhere. Even if I turn the plane up on, it will not turn on because I also have another switch here. Once I turn it on, only thing can I turn on the plane now. As you can see, once I turn on the plane now, it automatically turns on the dust collector. The seizure lift is completely down now, so I'm going to start the timer to see how long it takes the seizure lift to fully extend. So, as you can see, it takes less than 30 seconds to fully extend. There are two outlets here, 
one is connected to the dust collector and the other one just a regular outlet. So if I should plug my two to this outlet with the dust collection, it automatically turns on the dust collector. So it's working perfectly. Um, if I should plug it on the normal outlet, then nothing seems to be happening with the dust collection. I also plug my table saw to the workbench. So it's the dust collection. So I need to open this back now. And when I turn on the dust, uh, the table saw, it should turn on the dust collector. I'm so excited for this vise. It's going to make life so much easier when cutting smaller wood pieces. If you're interested in building this workbench, the build plan is in the video description below. This is the end of this workbench build. I'm so happy with the functionality built into this workbench. I will admit, I made many more mistakes than I could count. It even took me more time than I anticipated. What are your thoughts on this workbench? Leave those in the comment section below. Thank you so much guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.